Francesco Forgione was born in the small Italian village of Pietrelcina on May 25, 1887. His family, though poor, was very devout. From an early age, Francesco was very pious and prayerful. He also began to see the devil at an early age, as well as apparitions from Jesus and the Virgin Mary. At age 16, he entered the Capuchin novitiate and was given the name Friar Pio. In 1910, after seven years of study, he was ordained to the priesthood and became Padre Pio. Ten years later, while praying in front of a crucifix, Padre Pio received the stigmata, making him the first priest in the history of the church to receive it. He was very embarrassed about the visible nature of the wounds of Christ and often prayed that God would allow him to suffer invisibly. He wore gloves to cover his hands and even underwent surgery without anesthetic to ensure that the doctor did not sneak a look at the stigmata without his permission. Padre Pio was also known to have the gifts of bilocation and of reading souls. He heard confessions for twelve hours a day and knew just the right words to say to a sinner. He was also able to tell if a penitent was sincere, and he astounded many who entered his confessional by accurately reciting their sins for them. The saintly man never complained about unjust accusations leveled against him, even when he was deprived of saying Mass. He assiduously dedicated his time to prayer, saying over twenty rosaries in one day. The Mass was the high point of his spiritual life, and people flocked to his Masses, which lasted for over an hour. As blood trickled from the stigmata, it was easy to see the Christ crucified in the person of Padre Pio saying Mass. Padre Pio died on September 23, 1968 at the age of 81. 100,000 people attended his funeral. On June 16, 2002, over 500,000 people gathered in St. Peter's Square to hear Pope John Paul II declare Padre Pio the saint of Pietrelcina. Praise be Jesus Christ, and blessed be the Virgin Mary, our Mother. Amen. St. Pio of Pietrelcina, known as Padre Pio, is a mystical and stigmatized saint who had the gift of miracles. God gave him this beautiful gift so Padre Pio can perform miracles for the glory of God all his life. In this video, we are going to share many true testimonies to give us an idea what the gift of miracles is, and to remind us that in everything, God always has the last word. Father Raphael, who was his prior from 1933 to 1940, says, On June 10, 1940, a woman arrived at the convent with a six-year-old son suffering from encephalitis. The next day, she listened to Padre Pio's Mass. After Mass, when she saw him go to confession, she presented her son in her arms, tearful and heartbroken. Padre Pio looked at her compassionately gave her a sign of blessing and entered the confessional. The poor mother, a little disappointed, but with faith, stayed in the church to pray until Padre Pio finished confessing. Later, she withdrew to the shelter where she put the child to bed, who immediately fell asleep. Around 5.30 p.m., the boy woke up and got up alone, fully healed. The next morning, the mother thanked Padre Pio, who replied, thank our Blessed Virgin Mary for giving you this grace. At that time, Dr. Filippo Di Capua, a pediatrician from Foggia, was present and saw the child before and after the cure. Father Raphael himself certified that on January 26, 1939, he went to San Marco in Lamis, where he visited Miss Veronica, great benefactress of the Capuchins and spiritual daughter of Padre Pio. He says, I found her dying. Two doctors had already told her there was no hope of being cured. I called her by her name, but she didn't answer me. 
Then I had an inspiration. I mentally called Padre Pio and asked him as his superior to pray for our benefactress to be cured. Instantly, she opened her eyes and felt the strength to answer. I blessed her and I came out of the place. That same day, when I returned to the convent, I personally recommended her health to Padre Pio. He told me that she would not die. After a few days, Veronica improved and she was able to personally thank Padre Pio. She lived another 26 years and died on January 13, 1960. The doctors who had given up hope for her cure had to acknowledge in this case a supernatural fact. Father Augustine wrote in his diary on June 10, 1945, I have been able to meet a lady from Voltutata Apula who had been deaf for 20 years, who has been healed after asking the Lord for healing through Padre Pio's intercession. I have recommended her to bring the certificates of the doctors who treated her during her illness and have her checked to certify that she was cured. Other people who had accompanied her certified the veracity of what she said. Father Alessio Parente declares, One day a woman told me Padre Pio is a saint, and she told me that her only daughter had internal bleeding, and despite the doctor's best efforts, they couldn't do anything to save her. She said, I constantly cried and invoked Padre Pio. Suddenly, I had seen him next to me. He had put a hand on my back and said, Don't worry, I'll be your daughter's doctor. Then Padre Pio disappeared. At that moment, my daughter agitated on the bed, and I thought it was the end. I called the doctor and was able to verify that the bleeding had stopped. The same morning, she was discharged from the hospital. Father Alberto Diapolito stated in the process of beatification that Father Placido Books had severe liver cirrhosis and he was cured after an appearance of Padre Pio in bilocation. The servant of God questioned about this, admitted it, and said that he had been to San Severo to heal him. The notary Francesco Fontana affirms that while in San Giovanni Rotondo, Dr. Sanguinetti confided to him that he had a young patient with a serious brain disease and that she should be operated on, but he doubted whether to take her to Rome or to a clinic in Battery. They asked Padre Pio and he recommended taking her to Battery, but he added, although we hope that before arriving, and he cut off the sentence. She was taken to Barry, and before reaching the city, she found herself perfectly cured. She was taken to the specialist at the Barry clinic, and he could only say, I don't understand why they brought her to me. Her liver is perfect, and I exclude that she has ever been ill. Upon returning to San Giovanni Rotondo, Padre Pio, laughing heartily, said to them, because of what an unexpected moment they had experienced in front of the specialist, let us thank our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us thank him. Father Raphael attested in the process of beatification. One morning, Brother Friar Crispin had forgotten to put out hosts to be consecrated. Padre Pio, after confessing, gave communion to the faithful. There were very few hosts in the ciborium, and the faithful were many. As he was giving communion, the hosts were increasing. I was present at this marvel that was noticed by the American Miss Maria Pyle and the German, Miss Caterina Valentini. In the summer of 1941, Father Raphael says, in the middle of the war, bread was rationed and every day about 15 poor people asked for bread. At lunchtime, we went to the dining room, but there was only about 500 grams of bread for the 10 religious in addition to the poor who were waiting. Padre Pio was still praying in the church. We began to eat the stew and suddenly Padre Pio arrives with plenty of fresh bread. We looked at him in surprise and I said to him, Padre Pio, where did you get this bread from? He replied, a pilgrim from Bologna gave it to me at the door. I answered, thank God. None of the religious said a word. They had understood that it was a miracle. After the death of Padre Pio, God continued to perform miracles through his intercession as he did in life. There are even cases in which he appeared to heal. This was stated by Maria Di Francesco. My mother, Lucia Di Bicari, on September 29, 1968, a few days after the death of Padre Pio, she became ill with paralysis on the right side and could not walk or move her right arm. Her face was disfigured and her mouth was crooked 
she was unable to speak normally. Dad and I prayed to Padre Pio to heal her. The doctor was not in his office and we waited for him to call us to tell us that he was coming. At a certain point, I went to the kitchen with my father and we heard from the room, my mother shouted, I have seen Padre Pio, I have seen Padre Pio. We rushed into her room and found her fully cured. We cried with joy while my mother told us about his appearance. Among the many miracles performed, let us see some of those about which there is abundant and serious clinical documentation. Jose Scatigna underwent a surgical operation on October 23, 1968, to remove a tumor in his groin. The histological analysis gave no hope. There was a metastasis due to the tumor. On November 8, he was admitted to Casa Solievo, but to everyone's surprise, the tests were negative, attributing his cure to Padre Pio. Antonio Palladino had been immobilized since July 3, 1935, when he had been run over by a concrete truck. On the night of December 12, 1968, he felt a touch on his left shoulder and saw Padre Pio, who told him to get up and walk without crutches. He was able to do so normally. Ina's stump had been almost completely immobile for two years due to neoplasia of the left leg. On October 29, 1968, she was asked to amputate her leg. She went to Padre Pio's tomb on December 20th. Padre Pio appeared to her in a dream, ordering her to put down her crutches. On April 25th, 1969, she began to walk normally. Maria Teresa Romero from Corrientes, Argentina, without any surgery, completely recovered the eardrum in her left ear that she had completely lost, leaving the specialists amazed. Thus, we could cite many other cases, such as Antonio de Pasquale, Dolores Insoralde from Argentina, Carmela Catania, Tony John Collette. The case approved as miraculous by the Vatican Medical Commission was of Mrs. Consiglia de Martino, 43 years old, affected by a rupture of the thoracic duct, which healed suddenly and lastingly without any therapy or surgical intervention which is considered inexplicable to science as ruled by the Vatican Commission on April 20th, 1998. With the approval of this miracle, Padre Pio was beatified on May 2nd, 1999 by Pope John Paul II at the Vatican. The miracle approved for canonization was of the seven-year-old boy, Matteo Pio Colea, who was attacked with fulminant meningitis on January 20th, 2000 and was taken to the Salievo house in San Giovanni Rotondo in an emergency. The whole family and acquaintances prayed fervently to Padre Pio. Within a month, he was totally cured and returned to his school to study without any kind of sequelae. He stated that he had had a dream while he was in a coma. I saw an old man with a white beard dressed in a long brown dress who gave me his right hand and said, smiling, Mateo, don't worry, you'll be healed soon. On one side, I saw three angels that had wings, but I have not seen their faces because they were luminous. That night, I cured a boy with blue-green eyes and black hair who was in a bed in a hospital in Rome. When my mother asked me, how did you go to Rome? I replied, I have made a flight with Padre Pio who held my hand and spoke to me with his mind. When we arrived, he asked me, do you want to heal him? I said to him, how can it be done? And Padre Pio replied, with the force of the will. I understood that he was in Rome because I recognized Luna Park where I had been with my uncle Giovanni. With the approval of this miracle considered inexplicable to science, Pope John Paul II canonized Padre Pio in the Vatican on June 16, 2002. His remains were exhumed on February 28, 2008 and his body was found incorrupt. On April 24, 2008, he was placed for the veneration by the faithful in a glass enclosure. Only his face has a special wax mask made in London according to his natural features. Praise be Jesus Christ and blessed be the Virgin Mary, our mother, amen.